make sure I got all. Number one, um, on her website, it says she holds three degrees, but she doesn't use any of them to make money. So I thought that was impressive. And I actually met her on Instagram. We were talking about it, and I have no idea how I met her. I just saw her work, and I really liked it. She's uh, just completing now the 2017 tour. You can go onto her website. She literally toured the country. She is a positive body artist, and I'm imagining you're going to talk a little bit about what that is. If you don't, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, she runs what's called a love rebellion. Uh, so we're going to learn a little bit about that as well. And she also, one of the cool things, actually I'll show it when we're done, she made, she, you made a coloring book about how to love your body. And it's really cool. And it was in my office, and somebody took it. So, but that means, but as Sarah said, perhaps... They needed it. Um, this is the only thing I have to say. This was on her Facebook today. It said, always a great day when you start out your day crazy. And she's wearing um, a spaghetti strainer on her head. So I'm curious to hear what she has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring up onto the stage Miss Sarah Young. I've been walking up to strangers in different cities, and I've been telling them that I'm a rebellion leader, and that I think they're awesome, and that I want to give them a sticker. And you all have two stickers for each of you at your table. It's funny because seven years ago, my nickname was Angry Sarah. Wow. In high school, my nickname was Spike. I was known for going up to very good-looking men in bars and punching them in the face. What? That's a true story. You can ask any of my high school friends. It was before the whole dare thing happened, so it was really easy to go into bars underage and drink if you were a girl and you put on tons of makeup, which I did. It was awesome. So anyway, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's actually an aside. So, so what happened was I was really angry and everything affected me and I didn't like myself and it was horrible and I, you know, things happen, parents die, marriages break up, and I find myself alone, and I start dating. Does anybody here online date? I've online, I still online date. It's, it's like, I don't know, I learned so much about myself. So I'm online dating, and I'm dating a bunch of dudes, and somebody asked me to send them a naked picture of me, and I'm like, oh my God, really? Okay. And uh, it was, it was... <laughs> That's the right response, right? So <laughs> I basically, I, it was before I had a smartphone, so I had like a digital camera and I like set it up in my backyard and I ran out naked. I'm like, nah, you know, whatever. And I'm afraid to look at the pictures. So I go to work and I don't look at the pictures and I come back and I put it on my monitor, which is huge and I'm like so afraid. And I put it on and I look and I'm like, holy fuck, I look really good. I'm like, <laughs> why don't I like my body? I don't have a bad body. I think that looks pretty. I mean, I, I like it. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? Like, I, I don't like my body. And then I realized I don't like myself. And then I realized it's not about my body. And so I'm an artist, and I decided I'm going to work this out through my art. And so I decided for a year... I would take a naked picture of myself. And over the naked picture of myself, I would, I would impose like something I needed to hear. And can you read that? It's not a matter of making yourself beautiful. It's a matter of recognizing how beautiful you are. Very easy. See, I, that's not bad. <laughs> Love your body whenever it's possible. It's always possible. Unconditional. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Strong is beautiful. When I was growing up, I was always told that I looked like a boy. And it was, I mean, in, in a way I didn't care because I was really good at sports. And, you know, I had a twin brother and I loved him and I thought being a boy was cool and, you know, whatever. And, and then, like, I grew 
older and I had muscles and people would tell me I was too muscular, too hairy, and I'd be like, for what? You know, like, for what? I don't, for what, re like, am I, am I a swimmer? No. You know, I don't cycle professionally, so hair keeps me warm. I get cold. I mean, and I kind of, I kind of realized as I was doing this project that, that like you said earlier, two millimeters is the difference between beautiful and not beautiful, or beauty and not beauty. And I think that beauty isn't beauty if it makes you feel ugly. Beauty is only beauty if it inspires you to feel beautiful. So I decided that I was going to control the message. I was going to control how I saw myself. And that project helped me to see myself and, and understand that feeling good about how I work and how I function and how I move through the world is so much more important than how I look. Like if I can lift 50 pounds throughout the day, I can get a job at UPS. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm not gonna be using my degrees, so that's an option now. <laughs> and then as I was posting these pictures of myself and on Instagram and Facebook, I had a lot of people saying, you know, I really like those, but it's hard for me to relate because that body is so perfect. And I was like, well, <laughs> Stop it. Um, I said, and I just was like, well, it doesn't actually have to be about you. You know, there's a world of millions of different things. And, you know, I love yoga, but I don't really buy Lululemon stuff. It's not offensive. I, I'm not offended by Lululemon. I'm not offended by super skinny girls doing yoga and doing the splits and doing handstands. And it's not offensive to me. It's just not me. And that's cool. And so the more I did this, the more I would hear that feedback. I can't relate. You know, I have cellulite. I have this. And then, of course, I showed a big picture of my butt with a lot of cellulite. And I was like, so do I. <laughs> Take that. Um, but then I realized, I'm an artist. Maybe I'll start drawing stuff, you know? So I started doing drawings. And people were like, yeah, I can, you know, I get that. And so for me, it was like, oh, I'm supposed to be drawing, you know, like, it's now, like, it, it started about me, and it became about us. You know, it started about how I love myself. And at this point, I was, like, feeling super confident and happy with my body and just, like, you know, very secure about, about me. You know, I, I wasn't Angry Sarah anymore. When I tell people that, they can't believe it, which is, like, a gigantic, I don't know, it's so funny to me. And being called a role model, oh, my God. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, if you can't read that, that says nothing about you is shameful. So I was making these drawings, putting them on Instagram, and then somebody said, yeah, I'd love to see a coloring book of this. And I was like, I got time on my hands. I'm not, used <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using my degrees, <laughs> so. made a coloring book. It's really cool. And I got it um, funded on Kickstarter. It was so awesome. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I was having conversations with people about being body positive. And there were so many conversations I had with people who were bigger than me, who felt like I couldn't really talk about it because I was this certain acceptable body shape and you know whatever you know I I didn't I didn't have the hard times they had had and I didn't have to deal with being big and and you know it's easy for me because because I'm not like them and it's one of those things where you think and it's the same thing with sexism, with men. You know, you think guys have it easy. I've talked to more guys about their bodies than I've talked to women. 
and men can't talk about it. We can talk, like I could tell you, I can tell all of you, I love my body, you'll feel uncomfortable. But if I tell you I hate my thighs, she's one of us. <laughs> Same with men. Men, I, almost every man I've dated, and I've dated so many, <laughs> they, they all, some, oh, I, you know, I get, get to the gym, or my pants, or my, my belly, or my back, you know, whatever. It's, it's always something. But the reality is that it's not really about your body. You know, you can say it is. You can say, no, it is about my body. I really don't like my ass. And I would say, then maybe you're paying attention to the wrong things. Because for me, it's not about, like when Mike told me, it's about taking control. I'm like, I don't believe in taking control. I believe in not giving away my control. I believe in not giving away my power. I believe in not believing that I have to be a certain size or weight or height to be happy. I, I know that I can accommodate. I've been accommodating all my life. And honestly, I like doing that. Like, that's something that makes me feel super proud and super happy. So at the beginning of this year, when bad things happened, and I had some time on my hands, I was like, I'm gonna do a love rebellion. I'm gonna be a rebel leader. I'm very influenced by Star Wars. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you. Oh, everybody is really. And I was like, I have to be like General Organa. I have to lead a rebellion. I have to lead a brave rebellion. Because I can write about this stuff and I can make drawings about this stuff, but I feel like there's such a power in talking to somebody and all, and all my social engagement projects have been like meet a stranger, listen to them, listen to their story, talk to them about it. And so I just thought I'm going to go across the country this summer and I'm going to, you know, ride the Amtrak and I'm going to go to different cities and I'm just going to walk around cities handing, handing out my stickers and telling people they're awesome. And it developed over the last four months. I mean, honestly, today, the last day I was doing it, I was in Washington Square Park, and I realized, oh my gosh, I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> it's like the last one I'm doing, and I realized, because like I walk up to people, and I'm just like, hey, how are you? I'm leading a love rebellion across New York City, and I just want you to know you're awesome. And you know, I'm, you know, cheery and happy, and I'm like pushing the joy on people, because you know, in New York City, and like this is this is my rebellion outfit. Like I'm I'm the girl with hearts on her boots. So when I approach people in like in Boston in New York City, people look at me like I'm a little out of my mind. And so I have to the first like few minutes I'm talking to them or a few seconds, I have to endure the crazy girl look. Like, oh my God, oh, she's talking to us. What are we gonna do? Like, I, I walked up to four girls in Provo, Utah. Beautiful town, by the way. And they all just started laughing at me. They looked me up and down, literally, and just started laughing at me. And I was like, I'm in high school. This is great. And I just thought, if I can do this, like if I can endure Mormons laughing at me? <laughs> there is nothing I can't do. <laughs> and you know, and that's the thing. When I talk to people, I can almost now predict how they're going to react to me by how I'm feeling. So today, the revelation was I started walking up to people in Washington Square Park. And instead of pushing, I would, I would just, in a very soft tone, say, hi, how are you today? I'm leading a love rebellion in New York City, and I just walk up to people, and I tell them they're awesome, and I give them stickers. And I think you're really awesome, and I want you to have a sticker. And, and the reaction was just like, oh, 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 oh my god, she's giving us a sticker. This, have you ever just listened? And 
and I'm just like, oh my God, you know, I, I've been doing it wrong for four months. You know, I've been like, <laughs> I've been like, I've been trying to like convince, you know, convince people. You want my stickers, you want this engagement, you want this love. And very often people are like, and, and I'm just gonna say it and no offense meant at all, very often it's a tall white man because I have a fear of them and I know that's why they, re they reject me. I'm just gonna <laughs> throw that out there. The, their response is very often, no, I'm good. You're good without love? Hmm. <laughs> No, because really, and, and you know, very, and my response to that, my outward response is, okay, have a good day. You know, and I walk along and I, inside I'm like, damn it. Because I, I know and I have come to believe that if I walk up to somebody and I have some trepidation or I have some fear, they're gonna feel it. And very often when I walk up to a tall white man, I'm afraid. That, that is the only category of person that I'm afraid of. And it's not fair, but it's true. And so I now walk up to, you know, everyone I can. I gotta say, by the way, homeless people, the best people. <laughs> they always love me. They just, <laughs> they want hugs. They're just, God bless. I've been blessed so many times by homeless people. <sighs> anyway. So today, after I realized that I'd been doing my project wrong for four months, I was like, I'm gonna start walking up to tall white guys and doing this. And I did. And guess what? I was right. They loved it. They, not one of those dudes was like, no, I'm good. They were all like, oh, wow, this is brave. Wow, this is special. Like, I was like, oh my God, I think I'm gonna cry. This is, I, I am the problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, you know, one thing leads to another. And so I feel like, you know, I came from a place where I was very angry and afraid and doubtful and through like getting to know myself and challenging myself, I liked myself. And the more I liked myself, the more I realized that beauty isn't how a person looks, it's how a person feels. And if I can engage with somebody and look them in the eye, even if I don't know them, and have even like a few seconds of a meaningful exchange, I feel like I've changed the world. If I have made one person's day better in this whole four months that I have been doing this, if I have made one person's day better, I have done what I wanted to do. Because the reality about the body positive movement is that it's about loving yourself. It's about accepting yourself no matter what, because we're all trained to choose, you know, money, work, profit over ourselves. We work ourselves to death. If you want your body to look good, you beat the hell out of it. You drink butter. <laughs> but the reality is that you will not love anyone else more than you can love yourself. That's physics. So I just work on retraining myself to not choose the money and not choose the profit and not choose the work and choose the connection with myself. You know, I'll put off the work if, if I'm gonna meditate, take a bath, stare at the ceiling. All these things bring me great joy. especially staring at ceilings. <laughs> so this is one of my, I would say, best pieces I'm most proud of. Um, and I would just say that, you know, I don't think anybody out there is free of this. 
we all struggle with it because we're more profitable when we doubt ourselves. And, you know, I'm selling, I'm selling coloring books, but frankly, if people want them, I give them away. Because it's not, it's not the money, it's the process of creating messaging for yourself. It's the process of creating a way to love yourself. Wait, where, oh, he just, oh, man, he just left the room. Wait, come back here real quick. Come back here real quick. Sarah, stand over here for a quick second. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I have a sticker for you. Really tall white man. The problem is that was going to be my opening. Ah, oh, you and I. Great minds think alike. They don't get taller or whiter than that. <laughs> By the way, the, um, the reason the people in New York had such a visceral experience to you giving them a sticker is because we're so used to people asking us for our stickers that you finally gave them a sticker and it's like surreal. It's it is different to be given a sticker. Um, number one, if you don't follow Sarah on Facebook, the stories she's telling are true. I, she ends up on my feed. You, you Facebook Live all the time, and you save it to your wall. And I'm watching going, girl's fucking crazy what she's doing right now. And she literally, you literally archive this. And honestly, I didn't know that you were even doing a tour um, at the time that I was started following you. Yeah. I was just like, she's just in different cities doing this, so good for you. Thank you. Um, and, and, and you know what? You, you're giving us a different view on the world. So clearly you had a have to versus a want to. You said you were angry. How long ago were you angry, Sarah? What, what was your name? Angry Sarah, right? Angry Sarah. And I would say the last time someone called me Angry Sarah was 2010. Got it. And so what changed? What made you say, I, where was that tipping point, though? There had to be a point where you said, no more. Or was it just a bunch of two millimeter changes? One day you're like, hey, no one's called me Angry Sarah anymore. I think it was the realization that I didn't like myself, that I was like, oh, I don't like myself. And that is why I keep giving away my power, is that, you know, I... I'm not protecting myself, I'm not defending myself, I'm not propping myself up, and that's why I keep trying to get other people to do that for me, and then getting mad at them when they don't. Mm -hmm. And would you really punch men in the face? Yes, I would. If any of my high school friends were here, they'd be cheering right now, because very often it would take, basically, I would just go up and punch somebody, and then the guy would get ready to punch, and I had like all, I have a twin brother, and I hung out with mostly guys in high school because I hung out with my twin brother. And then all of them would like jump in and be like, get out of the bar. And I'd be like, all right. I'd be drunk or whatever. Well, well from this photo here, I wouldn't want to be punched in the face by you. Uh, I, I can tell you that right now. That's and, why they got mad. And that, what, oh, they got mad? The dudes would get mad when I punched them. It wasn't like, hee hee. It was like, like it was like. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's anger though. Yeah, angry Sarah. Ang angry Sarah. Yeah. So, all right. So you're going on this love rebellion, which mm -hmm. is so neat. Mm -hmm. And Thanks. you're going through, and you're, you're even like A-B testing. You're like, oh, that worked. That didn't work. That worked. Mm -hmm. So you're really, it sounds like you're starting to get results. So and now it's over. What's that? And now it's over. And now so are you yeah. going to do another one? Well, I mean, it's like, you know, the... The naked picture thing led to the drawing thing, led to the coloring book thing, led to the love rebellion. So then there's like the next thing that I'm going to be doing related to self-love and body positive and, you know, acceptance and all that. So like it goes, it keeps going. Like good art just just gives you more questions to answer. And so I have more questions that I'm going to answer. So good art gives more questions to answer. So then 
you know, obviously you don't need to know what the end in mind looks like, but it seems like this is really growing. And it sounds like we're, it's great because we're getting Sarah at the beginning of this journey, more or less, right? Yeah. So what, we're, what is next? Where do you want to go? And because I'll tell you, you seem like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. And all of us are sitting here like, how the hell do you just get up and go and do that? And because you're from Washington, right? Bellingham, Washington. Did you drive to New York? I take the train. Did you listen? Amtrak. Oh, I thought you said you drove. <laughs> I totally thought you said you... Didn't she say she drove? No, okay. Just joking. The answer is I don't listen, okay, number yeah. one. I, I, I don't. I've been taking the train around. I thought you said you... For some reason, I thought you said you drove. No. So you took the train. The, I take the train all over. Wow. Yeah. I had 18 stops. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And this was your last stop. So what a great way to end it. So then what is next or what is there some vision you have that you're like, this is what I'd like to bring yeah. to the world? Where, where, where are you going? Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of what happened was I would go to cities that had colleges and this wasn't a plan. This just happened. And I definitely noticed that when I was on college campuses, the interactions were so potent. Uh, the kids were very much like, oh my God. God, this is so needed. How did you get to this? Like, I'm emailing now with so many college kids who are, who are just like, I want to know how to do what you're doing, and, and, and how would I work that out, and, and what is this, you know, and, and there's just all these conversations going on with me and, like, I think, like, seven or eight people from different campuses about this. So my next step is to work with college campuses and talk to kids and go to them and do something like this where I walk around the campus and I say and I give them things and I say you're really great you're very important uh here's a sticker and then afterwards talk to them about the importance of connection and social engagement and 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 understanding that being afraid of something you don't know is the is the best way to direct your life if you're afraid about something you don't know find out about it if you're afraid of strangers, talk to them. If you're afraid of tall white men, talk to them, you know? <laughs> I mean, so that's, I mean, I really want to get that going with younger people because really it's kind of about just inspiring somebody to do what they can do best. Like, you know, I do this and this is what I do, but I might talk to somebody who can like do something huge, like change the world, because they're like, well, if she can do that, I have this other specialty, and you know, it might be something that could really make a huge difference in terms of like sustainability or you know, whatever. You want to help people think and get control back in their life, yeah. but starting with themselves. Right, exactly. And everything you're saying reminds me of something um, which made me say I needed to make the change for myself. And it wasn't for vanity reasons, but I said I need to take care of myself first before I take care of my staff, my team, or anyone around me. And Richard, someone asked Richard Branson once, he goes, how do you, someone said, um, how do you run 200 companies? Because that's, he, he, I think it might even be 400, I can't remember what it said. He goes, how do you run 200 companies? And he goes, I exercise. Now it's not about him getting in shape. And that was his only word, and that was right. like the, that's like the folklore of, of the story. Yeah. But, you know, he did go on and he has talked about, it. he says, if you can't take care of you first, and he's not even talking about the physical look, right? but if you can't be in, he said, if you can't be in control of this, mm -hmm. which includes what you're saying, yeah. the way you think about all of this, right. you'll never be able to control anything else. Right. So thank you for bringing to the world and to our audience today and being the role model, because you are <laughs> Sarah Young.